So last week I did a session on God passing. So that was episode two of this series. This week we're going to look at the other side, we're going to look at God. So how can we train God differently? And how can we use wrestling in the, in the thousands of years that they've worked on taking people to the floor? How can we use that idea to actually make our God better? So I believe there is a defensive posture to God. The purpose of God is to first defend the body using the strongest part that we have, the legs. So if I can just borrow a hand please, so if it's lying back. So if Henry's legs are completely straight out here, that isn't the guard. Okay, if I was by his feet here, there's no guard there. His legs aren't turning me and I've got complete mobility to walk around him. But his legs are upright here and they're pointing towards me. I'm now threatened, okay? Even though you can't kick me in jiu-jitsu, there's no up kicks, etc. Genetically, deep down, I don't now want to move as much. So he's actually controlling my mobility mentally, okay? And wherever I go, his feet will follow. Um, once he's got good mental control over me and my control of my mobility this way, the next thing he wants to look for is physical control. So, sit up, please, thank you. So if you look at the idea of boxing and wrestling, both of them involve cutting angles to try and attack someone. So if wrestling, you want to try and step outside and hit from the side, boxing, the exact same thing. You can look at the exact same idea when it comes to jiu-jitsu guard, in that if his legs don't follow me perfectly, that allows him to step around and that allows him to then pass his guard. So his feet need to be able to follow me. He needs to have that dominion over his hips. And that would be his control. After that, he wants to be able to generate a physical control over me. And this way, again, it comes back to wrestling. In uh, the main point of control in wrestling is they want control of the back of my head, so that would be the control of my posture and my spine, control of my arms or underneath my armpits, so that's underhooks, overhooks, and arm drags, etc. And the last one is control of behind my legs, behind my knees, behind my ankles. So the first part of wrestling, when you actually look at defense in wrestling, is to stop those things from happening. You don't let anyone hold them to the back of your head. You don't let anyone establish good underhooks, a good dragging uh, control of your arms, or good overhooks, and you don't let anyone control the back of your legs. All those things normally involve a takedown. And the second they start, you, you strip them. But pretty much every guard follows this same formula. So you have spider guard, close guard, half guard, dead heaver, etc. All of them at some point follow this. You have to get control of hip space slash armpit slash uh, arm control. You have to control the back of the head and you have to control behind the legs. Except the difference between guard passing and wrestling is we let people establish a guard and then we try and fight out of it. That's like learning, learning single leg defense by only doing letting people get hold of a single leg and then trying to fight out of it. Instead of having good defensive posture, good hand fighting and stopping those things happening before, uh, before they even start. So looking from the other perspective then is if I have the opportunity to actually get control of those spaces, I want to make sure there's no gaps and I have full control and I then make the most of it. So how do you train this then? How do you train this idea of guard? So there shouldn't actually be individual guards necessarily. You should be able to follow this kind of formula. So if you're, just like I, was, as I said last week, in that when it comes to passing, you don't have individual passes, you follow a formula of stripping these places and then trying to expose the space on them. The same can be said while playing guard. So initially, he wants to be able to defend his body. He needs to make sure his knees are staying close to his shoulders and his arms are defending his armpits. Exactly as you would in wrestling, you don't let anyone behind your head, you don't let anyone behind your leg, you don't let anyone into this space here. So you defend that first. Secondly, then you fight out when you feel comfortable. And you're after those controls on the other person. So if Henry has guard on Natty, for example, so he's on your knees, is that here, Henry is defending his body. Henry is defending these aspects here. And Naki's doing the exact same. So as Naki approaches, Henry's going to look for those spaces, so either behind the leg, into the armpit area, or behind the head. And this then becomes wrestling. Is that Henry's going to maintain those grips, so go back to it, whilst also binding out for his own. And Naki wants to be able to strip those grips, and then 
try and find the exact same space on Henry. If Henry leaves that open, so that's the same like um, if I was here with Henry and he got rid of his head and I left my arm like that. That looks pretty stupid. I have no control here. Okay? Or if he starts to actually get a better grip over me, like he goes for like a, an overhook or an underhook. That's the exact same. I don't maintain this head grip. I have to return. I have to be able to pull my back out. But we do this sort of weird stuff in guard where we have really poor control over someone, yet we let them back into that space on our own. And that's when passes happen. So the way then I, I think we should actually then learn to play guard is we have this idea. We have this idea of, we explain to people that you look for these controls using your legs or your hands to control the backs of the legs, armpits, hips, and head. And we approach it as a sport aspect. So when we do triangles, uh, for example, so Naki, can you go with a triangle on Henry? Um, Close guard. Thank you. So here, don't kill him. Uh, we start then with the finishing details. Like with a single leg, you start from the, the end of the single leg. So you look at how to hold on to the leg, how where to keep your head position in, how to create good pressure on the thigh. It's the exact same here. I want to examine all the details that make a triangle work. Okay? We can see now the, the relationship to wrestling. In that, once this has happened, we now release it a little bit. So now, uh, Naki has only got control here. But he wants to control Henry's posture, he wants to control his hands. So now, we have a little bit of extra resistance from here. So Henry's going to try and posture, as he would, he's going to fight back. And Naki is now going to try and break his posture and go back to that triangle, because he knows what he wants. Brilliant. Now we're going to go a bit further back, where Naki's only pushed one arm through. But he has his legs wrapped around Henry's body, but his posture hasn't broken. So now we have a little bit more different resistance. So Henry's going to be doing this, trying to posture himself up, and Naki's going to now try and break his posture again to try and find it. Perfect. And now we're going to go back a bit further. And now, as we step back into things, we actually add a little bit of extra, so we can actually look at arm bars and platters to coincide with it. Like how you would in wrestling, like if you mess up your single, you can go for a double. It's the exact same here. So, say for example then that Naki has control with Henry in half a triangle. He's controlling his posture of his legs. So say Henry's resistance means that Naki now changes more to an armbar. Perfect. That is the exact same as if you do a single left to double left. Well, notice here we haven't done any setups here. Okay? Setups are his own. He knows what he's after. He needs to try and break Henry's posture. He needs to control those spaces. So now we go back to just having Naki uh, into uh, defensive guard, please. Good chicken. And Henry is just going to be sitting with a kind of same kind of defensive kind of posture, looking at passing Naki's guard. And Naki knows what he's after, so now he's going to do a bit of hand fighting, gentlemen, and try and so Naki's going to benefit here from the triangle, but Henry's going to be fighting actively. Boom, and the triangle happens. Thank you, gentlemen. But none of that involved a normal kind of closed guard setup. He knew what he wanted, he knew how the triangle should look by the end, and then he approached it in a more sport aspect. So every time that Henry was testing Naki's guard, he kept back to his defensive posture, he could snap down, he could hand fight, and the second the gaps open, that Henry forced an error, Naki capitalised and knew what he wanted, he had these things in the bank. So I think we approach guard wrong. I think having the martial arts worth having specific guards and then a system of guards and a system of passes is inefficient. I think we have end products, like double legs, single legs, triangles, guillotines, etc., sweeps, and we have sport-based setups. We know what we want. We want to be able to control people's posture and control these spaces, and the more we control them, the more it allows us to set up our submissions and sweeps. But the second we then feel vulnerable, we release it and return back to A, what is most important, just like in wrestling, control this space, control our own posture, uh, distance control and being able to control their mobility just even with a bit of um, mental control just like in wrestling so I hope they found that in video interesting I hope uh, even if you've done guard obviously for a long period of time try and approach these ideas into your guard and tell me if they work or not I've completely changed how we play guard here I don't think uh, Henry's one of my blue belts he's, he's never actually learned guard properly 
where he plays a sport by a base guard. He's always after the controls, he knows when to release, and it makes his guard an absolute fuck to pass. But thank you for your time, and so yes, yeah, send me your questions, and hopefully I'll answer them for next week. Thank you. Boom.